from Millville, New Jersey, and reaching around the world. New Life World Outreach Ministries presents His Word of Power with Pastor Richard F. Myers. Join us in a time of joyful worship, anointed ministry, and dynamic preaching from one of our Sunday morning worship services. It happens here on His Word of Power. to lift up your name, oh Lord. Come on. Jesus, we worship. We worship and adore you. outside my grave because you stood outside my grave with tears still on your face I heard you say my name my night was turned to Sing it out, you came, you came, oh, 
Changing colors. Life's colors change daily for each of us. We go from happy to sad, anxious to peaceful. There's events we endure and ones we enjoy. The colors of life are always changing, but there's one that's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come, let us introduce you to Him. New Life Church, the church of many colors.
Just say hallelujah with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you know, you know that the word amen there is not uh, the song is finished. The word amen means let it be. So what they were singing, you were saying amen to, which means let it be the blessings that they pronounced upon us. Amen. Hallelujah. So we got blessings. We're getting feedback, guys. Uh, the blessings that were upon them are now upon you as they sang and pronounced the blessings upon you. Amen. So I agree with them and I bless you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's get to the Word of God this morning. Open your Bibles up to where we've been studying, Acts the 16th chapter, and we've been studying here at the 20th verse. So if you'll look there with me, we've been talking about Silas and Paul who have been locked up in the prison and been held captive uh, by the jailer, and now it is the midnight hour. So if you'll look there with me to Acts, the 16th chapter, we want to begin reading there at the 20th verse. And, and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates ran off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. 
And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosened. And the keeper of the prison awakening out of the sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you for your word today. I give you glory for it and I honor you. For today is the day that you have made and because you've made it, we are partakers of it. And if we're partakers of the day that you have made, we can sing and rejoice. We can praise you contrary to what surrounds us and what engulfs us. So I thank you today, Lord, for your word this hour that you may speak to us and to our hearts. And I give you glory for it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. and all of God's people said it out loud. Amen. It's 12 o'clock. It's midnight. Here they are locked up in prison. They begin to sing. They begin to praise God. And all of the prison is shaken by this incredible uh, earthquake that comes just out of them having the strength and the ability to sing praises unto God. And we learned over the last few weeks, we learned that singing unto God is a weapon of warfare for us, that we can use that against the enemy. And I don't think many of us really grasp the significance and the depth of that statement, that singing becomes a weapon of warfare. You know, one of the things that I found happens to me when I sing, I can't pay attention to what the devil is saying to me. Hello? because I'm concentrating on who I'm singing to. So the voice that's in my head trying to discourage me, trying to discredit me, no longer has power over me because I have now focused my attention on God. We learned that prayer points out the problem, praising and singing concentrates on the answer to the Lord, from the Lord. So God's truth is our weapon of warfare against all the devices of the enemy. In fact, the Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Would you say that with me, please? You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You know why you're having trouble today with all the things that are going on? because there's not truth in any of it. Do you know why you watch the newspapers and you get more confused, or, or watch the news, and you get more confused than you were before you watch? Because the truth is not there. Oh, there's a form of truth, but it's not the truth of God Almighty. Somebody say amen. And have you noticed that every time someone raises up with something about real truth, they are suppressed and put down. Have you noticed all the videos and stuff that have been taken off of the social media platforms when they contradicted the truth that's trying to be sold to us? Somebody say amen. And why the nation is so much in turmoil today and why there's so much hatred going on and so much division and strife going on, the reason for that is very simple. We don't have the foundational truth of God and this is one nation under God. Somebody say amen. And so what happens is we're in this state of flux, in this state of turmoil, because once we were born again, everything about us is life and everything about the virus and the, and the, the riots and everything is death. And so it doesn't bear witness with our spirit. And so what happens, it causes confusion and turmoil in our lives, and that's why we're really not uh, believing everything the government, the media, and everybody else is telling us, because it's not bearing witness in our spirit. 
And the Bible says this in the book of John. It says Jesus came, he came to bear witness of the truth. He came to bear witness of the truth. If in case you need it, that's found in uh, John, the 18th chapter, the 37th verse. He came to bear witness of the truth. So if Nancy here tells me a lie that doesn't line up with the witness of the truth of me and the Lord through his word, something gets off inside of me. How many notice lately that with all the stuff going on, something is off on the inside of you? You know, it, it just isn't feeling right. It's just not, you know, something's not jiving. You know, you hear this, you hear that. There's so many contradicting stories coming at us that it's hard to know exactly what's going on. Can you imagine what was happening to Paul and Silas when they were in the prison? Can you imagine they've been beaten? They're probably bleeding. They're hurting. They're aching. They're locked up in stocks. They're in the innermost part. And they begin to praise God and they begin to sing, the Bible says. And, and they're in this place at midnight. And, you know, you've heard about the midnight hour before. There they are in the midnight hour. And they have something in them that enables them to lift their voices and sing praises unto God. You know what that something in them is? The truth. When you know the truth, the truth will make you free. And because you are now a creature, a new creation in Christ, a new creature in Christ, all things have passed away. Your foundation now is found in the truth of what God's word is. And now in order for you to sin, in order for you to mess up, you have to willingly violate the truth and life that's on the inside of you. You can't just slip into sin anymore. Once life has taken a hold of you through your acceptance of Jesus Christ, you can no longer say, oops, I slipped. You have to willingly cross the line of truth and you have to go into the lie of deception. You cannot just slip into it or fall into it accidentally. You have to willingly do that because where there is life, there is also light. Somebody say amen, please. Listen, listen to me carefully because this is important. Jesus said, I am the life, the light, and the way. I am light and I am life. So I have Jesus in me. I have life in me. And when anything starts to contradict life, which is truth in Christ, anytime that does it, the Holy Spirit begins to shine the light upon it. And the Bible says, what place does light have with darkness? Why does it say that? Because light always exposes darkness. Do you know that darkness cannot overcome light? Light always overcomes darkness. As long as these lights are on in here, you will not sit in darkness. We have to turn those lights off in order for this sanctuary to become dark. You got me? We got to turn this light off in order for it to become dark in us. And what's happening is because you have all this life in you right now, because you have the life of Christ and it's flowing and it's functioning, this light is shining on the errors and the lies and all the junk that's coming against you and you're realizing, hey, something's wrong with this whole picture. And when we can get the understanding of that, we can then allow the light of the life that's in us to fulfill the directions of God for our life and our purpose and our destiny. And it all comes because why? The light that's in us. You know, the Bible says this in Hebrews 13, 
that God will make us perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ. So that gives me the power, the life, and the light to no matter what I am facing and struggling with, to let the light shine of praise and song, which produces hope and promise inside of me. Now, what many of us don't realize, and this is where God wants to equip us with the weapons of our warfare, which are not carnal, but are mighty. When I begin to sing praises unto God, now listen to me carefully. I can't sing ghetto rock or ghetto rap and expect God to do something. I can't sing heavy metal. I can't sing those kind of songs and expect God to move on my behalf. But the moment I begin to sing his praises, are you with me this morning? As I begin to sing his praises, God is released to work on my behalf. And when I begin to do that, I stop the forward motion of the enemy that's coming against me. It becomes part of my shield of faith. Hello? Do you know singing produces and re fortifies the shield of faith that you have? The shield of faith is designed to stop the fiery darts of the enemy. And when I praise and I sing, regardless of what's going on around me, that shield gets lifted up between me and my enemy, and I get the victory. Hello? So no matter what I'm facing, when I begin to worship and praise God, the shield of faith begins to rise in me and I begin to see God's awesome power working on my behalf. You say, oh, wow, that's really good, but I'm not a Paul and Silas. And where did Paul and Silas get this strength? I don't know about you, but for most of us, I think, if we're beaten up, we've been beaten, we're now in the innermost part of the prison. It's probably dark in there. It's probably, uh, you know, cold and stanky and damp, and I'm locked up. My feet are locked up. Where in heaven's name am I going to get the strength and the willingness in that state and condition to lift up my hands, lift up my heart, and praise God for the exact situation I'm in? I'm going to tell you, it's going to take me a while because I'm going to be whimpering. I'm going to be crying. I'm going to be, oh, God, why me? Why is this happening to me? I've been serving you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on. That's where so many of us are today. Lord, why me? What's happening, Lord? Blah, 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 blah. Until we come to our senses. Until we begin to realize that the power is in the promise. Let me say that again. The power is in the promise. Do you know Paul did not know Jesus when he was alive walking on the face of this earth? Do you know Silas never met Jesus at all? Paul met Silas on the road to Damascus when the cloud overshadowed him and God said, why are you kicking against the bricks? And he said, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus of Nazareth, the one that you're persecuting. But poor old Silas, all he did was go to church and he had a position in the church. Uh, you know, Paul, uh, Paul met Jesus in the road of Damascus, but old Sil Silas, all he did was he worked in the church. He was part of the church, but somehow he caught the truth of what God is through his promises. Paul said this, 
He said, I press towards the mark of the high calling. He said, I haven't arrived yet. So I don't know what time Paul and Silas were put in that prison. I don't know if it was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm sure it wasn't 12 o'clock at midnight because the magistrates were in session when, he, when they got accused. So it may have taken him from whatever time it was that he was locked up until midnight to get to the place spiritually where he could make the decision that he was going to praise the, the Lord. Somebody say amen, please. So what happened? How did they get that if they've never met Jesus? Here's what they had. They had a revelation of Jesus. And the moment you get a revelation of Jesus, you get the power of Jesus. The moment you get the power of Jesus, you get the power to overcome your enemy. The moment you get the power to overcome your enemy, you have the power to become victorious instead of victor. You have the power in you by the revelation of understanding who Jesus is, what Jesus has done for you. And the moment you get that, you become that new creature in Christ that the word of God talks about. Once you have the revelation of Jesus, listen to me, you become invincible. You're no longer a, a, a weeping, uh, crying, barely hanging on believer. Once you get the revelation that God is God and Jesus is Jesus and you're indwelled by both of them through the Holy Spirit, the power that is released in you is the power that will stop the enemy in his tracks. And so whether you are suffering from a loss, whether you are suffering from financial losses, whether you're suffering from relationship losses, you have this power in you. And what happens is this, get this now, this is really important. This power overwhelms all the carnal nature that's in you and you begin to rise up spiritually and the spiritual person in you overpowers the carnal person. So the spirit man rises up and he overpowers everything the mind is trying to tell you, everything that's operating in you. And here's some cool things about this whole thing. The moment you get that, that, uh, that knowledge and that revelation of Jesus, you get to that place that Paul spoke about. And this is what Paul said in Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Now listen to this because this is really cool. Brothers, I, for my part, do not think of myself as having gotten hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind me and straining forward, forward, towards what lies ahead, I keep pursuing the goal in order to win the prize offered to me by God's upward calling in the Messiah Yeshua. I'm reading from the complete Jewish Bible. So listen. I'm going to set you up here and get you ready for something. I press on towards the mark of the high calling, forgetting what's behind and pressing on towards what's forward. What's forward? What's forward is more revelation of who Jesus is. Now get this, because this is going to help you a whole lot, especially during the crisis that we're in right now. A true revelation of Jesus removes all fear. A true revelation of Jesus removes all fear. How do you think Daniel was able to go into the lion's den? How do you think Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was able to go into the furnier, uh, uh, burning furnace, you know, the fiery furnace. And how do you think 
that the king, when he looked in, said, did we not throw three men in, but I see four men. He saw four men after this man, you know, that, that was thrown into the fire, these men that were thrown in the, in, into the fire, because when we exhibit ourselves and dismiss, listen to this, and dismiss fear, we're free to have the fullness of the power of God operating in our lives. And all I need is a real revelation of Jesus. See, I know there's folks right now saying, right, this very moment, watching us by television, or you're here in the sanctuary, but Pastor, you know, I've made Jesus the Lord of my life. I've even been baptized in the Holy Ghost, but I still struggle with fear. Well, I can give you scriptures that will help you with that, but I want to give you why you're still struggling with fear. Because once you know that and the light is shined on it, fear no longer has power over you. All fear, I want you to get this, get this, get this, get this. All fear is based on one fear, the fear of death. Every fear's foundation is on the fear of death. What if I get cancer? I'm going to die. What if I get COVID? I'm going to die. You know, uh, what, if I, what if my heart isn't healed? I'm going to die. What if I don't have enough money to pay my bills? I'm going to die. What if I don't have the funds to be able to go out and buy food? I'm going to die. What if I don't get the chip? I'm not going to be able to buy anything. I'm going to die. All fear is based on the fact that you could die from something. So here's what you've got to get a hold. Here is the revelation of Jesus. And I can talk to you purposely out of this position because I experience it all the time. This morning I told my wife when I got up, I'm laying in bed and I got up and I am sweating profusely and my heart is racing. I'm going to tell you something. I have a revelation of Jesus because I said out loud, I don't know where you were at that time, I said out loud, if I have to die, I'm going to die preaching the message of Jesus Christ in the church. So I am not afraid of that anymore. And you know what happened? The moment I said that, the sweating stopped and my heart settled back down. I took my blood pressure and checked my heart rate. My blood pressure was 126 over 66, and my heart rate was 57, down from over 80. Why? Because the fear of death can no longer hold you captive. But here's what happens, and here's why you're still battling it. Because your soul man, this flesh guy, is constantly trying to take you back into captivity because that's all it knows. Your flesh man, your soul man, the man that makes the decision appear in your head, all it knows is captivity. It was born into captivity. And until you get that into submission, fear can play with you. All kinds of devices of the enemy can attack you. But once you realize and recognize, wait a minute, I'm not going back to Egypt. I am not going back to captivity. I am pressing towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And I no longer have the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. And because I know I have that, I am no longer afraid of death because death is no longer in me. And so what we're doing and what the word of God does and how Simon, uh, Paul and Silas could sing in the prison in their really terrible state of being, the only way they could do it is they realized that they were full of life. And sometimes 
We just need reminding of the revelation of Jesus so that our soul man can't take our spirit man back into captivity again. And now when you hear the scriptures, he has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You know why? Because you have a revelation of Jesus. When Jesus says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, you know what that says? That says, I'm elevating the spirit man that's in me over the carnal flesh man. Paul said it, Paul said it great. He said, you know, in Romans, by the way, he said, you know, I want to do this and I wind up not doing that and I don't want to do this and I wind up doing it because there is a war going on inside of me. And I want you to understand something. That war is not between you and the devil. That war is between your flesh and your spirit man. And what you have to recognize and realize every time you put your soul man, your flesh man back into the position it belongs and that's in subjection to your spirit man, you get victory. Fear is lost and you overcome every battle that you're in. Somebody say amen. Listen to this from 1 Corinthians 15, 55. Oh, death! Where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? And I didn't realize that. I've quoted that thing a lot of times, but I never realized what the 56th verse says. Listen to what 1 Corinthians 15, 56 says. The sting of death is sin. I'll wait till you get that. The sting of death is sin. And strength of sin is the law. And the strength of sin is the law. Do you remember when Jesus said, I have not come to abolish the law, but I've come to fulfill the law. That scripture verse right there gave you the authority and the power to overcome every device that the enemy throws against you. You were born in death, but you've been raised in life. You were born into this world in death, and when you were born again, you were raised in life. And it is now time for us to grasp, we believe, so we speak. Bow your heads with me. Hmm. So the sting of death is sin for us. So the sin or the sting of sin is death for us. Then what we have to realize is that that sin is no longer in our lives. And because we have the revelation of Jesus, we too can say, <laughs> oh, death, where is your sting? No longer do you have to be afraid of finances. No longer do you have to worry about the economy collapsing. No longer do you have to worry about disease after disease that will come against you because that is death unto you and that is sin unto you and you are no longer held captive by that and you cannot allow your carnal man to take you back into captivity. So Father, I thank you today I thank you that we will not allow the enemy to hold us captive through our own flesh. That God, we will line ourselves with the revelation of Jesus. 
And Lord, that revelation of Jesus will take us into dimensions of holiness and righteousness and power that we have never, ever, ever before enjoyed because we are no longer afraid of death because we are life and we are life eternal because of the cross of Christ. And so I thank you today, Lord, that all fear is gone and the fullness of who you are in our lives is now the power that worketh in us. I thank you for that. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Your heads are still bowed. Your eyes are still closed. Maybe someone here in the sanctuary or maybe someone at home watching us by live stream. You've never asked Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life. So you've never gotten that revelation of Jesus. You've never gotten the power that comes with the revelation to overcome the fear of death, which is the foundation of all fear. But today, this moment, you can change that. Today, this very moment, you can say, Jesus Christ, be the Lord and Savior of my life. And you can be free of the fear of death itself. And everything about you will become life. So if you're here in the sanctuary this morning and you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, or somehow you've allowed it to happen that you've walked away and you don't have that full revelation like you once had, but this morning you know you're ready to receive it again. Would you please just raise your hand here in the sanctuary? and We'll have a counselor come to you right now and pray with you. Anyone here in the sanctuary, if you're doing that by home, at, at your home, or wherever you might be right now watching this broadcast, would you bow your heads right now with us? And would you pray a simple prayer from your heart and just tell God, I believe that I need Jesus. I believe I need the revelation of what he's done for me. I believe I need my name put down in the reservation book of heaven. And so today, I accept him as the son of God and as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer, at home, would you please make sure you tell someone? You know, just call someone up, tell somebody in the house, I just made Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. And if you don't have anyone to do that, you can send me a note. You can go online and do on newlifeoutreach.org, click contact us, send me a note there and tell me. And if you need a Bible, I'll make sure you have a Bible. But tell somebody it's important for you today. For the rest of us here today, let's stand up to our feet. It's time to say thank you to the Lord one more time. So join with me as we praise and worship him. And at the conclusion of this, we will dismiss you by rose. Remember, you are life, you are light, and you are the love of God. God bless you. Pastor Steve. This is how I fight my battles. 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 This is how I fight my battles.
Hi, this is Pastor Myers. I pray you enjoyed our broadcast today, and I wanted to let you know that our church family would love to have you join us here in our sanctuary for one of our weekly services. Every Sunday morning, we have dynamic worship, powerful preaching, an awesome children's church, and we see the power of God as he ministers to his family. Our Sunday services begin at 11 a.m. Then on Wednesday nights, we have ministries for the entire family. We have adult worship and Bible study and our blast zone for kids 5 to 12. It's a night packed with the presence and power of God, and that happens at 715 every Wednesday night. For more information about New Life Church, you can go to our website at newlifeoutreach.org. There you'll find all the information you need to be part of our great church, and you'll see what God is doing in the lives of our families. Until our family meets your family on our next broadcast, may God richly bless you and yours. we want to do with this outreach ministry and building this treatment center for the lepers is to give them their medications for free. The government uh, will provide that and, uh, and to reach out to those who have such a desperate need in this area of their life. And that's what God did. He took the first step. While we were still lost in our sin, Jesus still died for us. site where we're believing God to be able to purchase this land and uh, build a uh, clinic here and uh, a little home for the lepers here. We're just outside of Tenali, India. And I have uh, two special gentlemen with me. This is Dr. Samuel. And uh, Dr. Samuel had worked with Mother Teresa in her lepers clinic in Calcutta. He is now up in the Tenali area. And uh, he is one of the members of our local church, our headquarters church here in Tenali. And this is Bishop Isaiah. Yes. And uh, this is the church that Dr. Samuel uh, attends. Yes. 